If you're a DBA, a developer, a sysadmin, or just part-time hobbyist, it probably has come to your attention that there's this thing out there called AI-assisted coding. And the question obviously is raised, should I be using it? Well, obviously, since this is a video about it, I'm going to kind of say spoilers here and say, yes, absolutely, you should. But let me tell you why. First of all, GitHub Copilot, which we're going to go into at this point, there are others, is not generally released. So first off, it's not a finished product. Anything here may be to change later. But on the testing that I have done, which in this case involved a lot of Go and uh, PowerShell and TSQL, because those are kind of like the basics I use these days, um, it's clear to see that whenever you use proper commenting and any comments in the code, as you should do as a good you know, developer. And I'm going to say the word developer because it doesn't matter if you're a sysadmin or if you're a DBA or whatever. If you're writing scripts, you're writing code, so you're a developer. Now, if I take something that's slightly more complex than your average PowerShell for a second in our example, so a connection to a SQL database. Not super hard, but I'm going to ask it to do something that normally you wouldn't do. I know a lot of you out there reluctantly do because you're not that familiar with it, which is use the .NET libraries to connect to the database. Now this is one that I like to do because I can never remember the name of the libraries offhand and almost always results in me going back to some snippet of code in order to go look it up. And here you can see a lot of just tabbed complete. Hell, I even just pressed hash there and said tabbed complete for the comment. I didn't even need to fill in the comment. How cool is that? And you see how many lines I can just add in by adding tabs. That's hilarious. But it does raise the question, is this how coding is going to be? Are we nothing more than just typing out a little bit of comments and then letting the machine do the rest? Well, there has been a lot of arguments. And you, if you look at the videos, a lot of developers complaining, we'll be out of a job soon. Well, no, because someone here still had to enter the comments and the logic of what you're doing still needs to be written by you. And as you may have noticed at the beginning, it suggested MySQL instead of SQL Server SQL. So no, you're not going to find yourself out of a job tomorrow. As much fun as it might be to think of that as a outcome of AI, just, you know, getting rid of the developers that created it. No, that, that's not the case. It's not going to happen. What it is going to do is replace your previous shortcuts. So some of us remember things like when we introduced snippets into EDI interfaces, where you could take chunks of code and then reutilize them, allowing you to basically not write the same code repeatedly. Or when we started learning to use functions so that we could avoid making the same chunk of code repeatedly. And yes, we did just break the system here because did we just say get rid of snippets and get rid of you know functions the way that we currently use them? Well, yeah, why not? Now, there are some limitations still with this. And like I said earlier, it's still basically a non-finished product. It's not ready to release to market. Hence, it's kind of a sign up preview mode still. And one of the things that I saw as a limitation, and I didn't see this in Go, I didn't see it in a lot of the other languages that other YouTubers have explored, and I didn't see it in PowerShell, but I did see in SQL is contextual information there. So example, if I say, you know, go select a table called X, no problem. It's very good at interpreting that. Where it struggled was when I said things like, I would like to select from two tables or two rows named this and this. There's a little bit of struggle within the AI to determine whether the single table or two tables. So it, it really wasn't able to suggest correctly. It kind of merged them. So you end up with sales and invoices as a table name, not sales and invoices as two separate tables, and I want to do a join with them. So how the information is interpreted or how you write your comments very much is determining the outcome, and, and particularly with TSQL statement. So 
it does struggle from that point of view and you need to think very hard about how you write your comments but you can get the results that you want it's more a case of it takes a little bit of fiddling to get the best out of it so you can see that I, I went through a few iterations just on screen to kind of capture how it decides or how it looks at what I'm asking it to do in order to get the result so you can see it still struggles with the whole sales and thingies being different but if I kind of tell it that hey this is a join and I want to then do something it quite happily suggests alternatives so it does still work it's still trying in the background to complete the request but it's not as mature as some of the other areas so obviously with the SQL the the main problem here is it doesn't understand the data you're asking it and maybe with some connection to a database already active in the background or having very explicit comments that would improve or just the fact that it's still being trained on DSQL. I mean, it originally launched with only a few languages and as far as I can see, almost every other language that is out there is now available. So this is something that is clearly growing. Now, would I recommend it for system admins, DBAs and hobbyists? Yes, absolutely. If you can get your hands on this, use it by all means. I wrote scripts in minutes that would normally take me half hour to an hour on occasions. Absolutely awesome. From a productivity point of view, this thing replaced snippets and probably any other EDI improvement over the years, hands down.